My name is Ethan Feinschreiber, and I have a passion for educating the world about snakes. As we know, Louisiana's lush ecosystem is certainly a hotspot for all sorts of snake species. Evolutionary adaptations that set a snake up for success here means they'll have to deal with water. Most of the species you're likely to see here are highly aquatic snakes that can swim just as easily as they can slither, including one of the only aquatic vipers in the world, the cottonmouth. It's a common snake here, so it wasn't long before we saw one. My GoPro is rolling, so we catch it. I see it, I see it. Definitely a cotton. Here it is. This is the infamous cottonmouth. There's no way I could do an entire season of Snakes of Louisiana without talking about the western cottonmouth. This is one of, if not the most common, venomous snake in Louisiana. These guys are everywhere. It makes sense as to why people are so scared of them. They have a venom that is indeed toxic enough to kill a human being with a single bite. They have an extremely powerful hemotoxin, which basically causes the blood to clot and it causes necrosis. They also have a partially cytotoxic venom as well, which rots the flesh. The cool thing about the venom, not only does it actually kill their prey, it actually helps digest their prey before they even start swallowing it. It's pretty much just a modified saliva. This one is only about, I don't even know if it's reaching two feet in length. It's not the biggest snake in the world. However, these guys do get really big. Overall, I'd say this is one of the largest species of snake you actually can find here. They're getting upwards of probably around five feet at most, but typically they're seen at this size, especially as adults. These guys are piscivores, meaning that they mostly eat fish. In fact, it's actually in their scientific name, Agkistrodon piscivorus. And not only do they eat fish, they go after a lot of other things like other snakes, believe it or not, and other reptiles and amphibians, such as frogs, salamanders. They not only eat live prey, but they also eat dead prey. Sometimes leftover fish piles of like dead fish is basically just an entire platter of food for a cottonmouth. So that is probably part of why these snakes are so successful here. Now these guys are very, very different from a lot of the other snakes out here because they are not what is considered a colubrid. They are a type of viper. A very big common thing with vipers is the fact that their fangs are up in the front of the mouth and that they are hinged, meaning that they actually fold back into the back of their mouth because if they weren't to fold back and they were to actually close their mouth, they would actually pierce their bottom jaws with their fangs because they're so long. So the reason they are able to have such long fangs is because they actually fold them back before they close their mouth just like that. Now this is ultimately called a water moccasin, but they're more commonly known as cottonmouths because the interior of their mouth is bright, bright white. When they feel threatened, they feel like they have nowhere to go, they will gape their mouth open to display that bright white coloration um, in hopes that it will deter a predator because bright colors means potentially venomous, and this is indeed a venomous snake. Another thing they do as a defense is they actually wiggle their tail back and forth, um, and a lot of people say they do that to mimic a rattlesnake, and the truth is, I'm not entirely sure. There's so many different reasons as to why they would do this but it just goes to show that even though they're not a rattlesnake but they are a venomous snake they still use that tail wiggling as a form of defense this is definitely not the most venomous snake out here I think coral snakes may range here I'm not exactly sure but coral snakes are definitely a lot more toxic than this guy most rattlesnakes are more toxic than a cottonmouth if you happen to get bit seek medical attention as soon as possible and even if you do live a bite from this still means if the venom spreads throughout your body too much or it's concentrated in one area too much you would have to get a limb amputated the, the great thing about these guys they're a lot more reluctant to bite than say a typical water snake is because they have venom they use their venom to subdue their prey and so if they're using their venom to ward off a predator, that means they're wasting their venom on something that is not food. Do these snakes make good pets? And the answer unfortunately is no. They're a venomous snake, so you know if you're looking for a pet snake, this is not a snake for you. If you see one of these guys in the wild, not only should you leave it in the wild, you shouldn't even try to pick it up. Because these guys are so common, sometimes people run into them by sheer accident. And uh, usually the way to avoid that is just to be on the lookout. If you're in a cypress swamp, really look out for these guys. Just look for anything that's potentially moving or curled up near the base of a cypress tree and you'll likely feel, recognize it's a, you know, it's a snake. If you can't tell if it's a cottonmouth or a water snake, just leave it alone just to be on the safe side. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to educate yourself on the water moccasin. I'll see you guys next time with possibly an even cooler snake. All right, well, let's let this guy go. I think he's, uh, he's doing that all himself. These forests and swamps are prone to both drying up and flooding significantly. 
changes in water level can be incredibly variable, not just because of weather, but also because of the high and low tides that flow in from the ocean to the freshwater swamps further inland. So it helps if you can swim. And not only did these reptiles find ways to survive in the water, but they've actually adapted to need it as well. This is precisely why any sort of disturbance to the ecosystem in terms of moisture should be mitigated as much as possible. If you enjoyed this episode of Snakes on the Brain, let me know by giving this video a like. And if you want to learn about other snakes I've caught, make sure to subscribe. I haven't really properly tailed a cottonmouth in a while. They have an extremely powerful hematox. My mom sent me a TikTok.